Hello everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. Today's video brings you a reconditioning and gentle restoration of a legendary pair of shoes from American shoemaker Floorshine. This is their Royal Imperial Golden Harvest Longwing Blucher, a modern legend amongst shoe aficionados and enthusiasts alike. Today's video will take us through a bit of the history as well as reconditioning process of this legend. As we gaze at this brochure from the 1960s from Floorsheim, it's important to recognize that the pair of shoes in front of you you see is over 40 years old. Floorsheim produced the Golden Harvest model from the 1960s through the late 1970s, and this particular model was manufactured in 1975 based off of its date code. The first pictures I wish to show are the condition of the shoes that I received, which were actually in incredible condition. This is what I look for when I shop for vintage shoes, is to make sure that the leather has not seen too much wear. Most of the wear that I saw was essentially cosmetic. There were no cracks or huge blemishes on the shoe. The welt seemed intact and the sole appeared to be in good condition. Now I'm showing you a finished product of the shoe after my conditioning process, which is what we're gonna take you through in this video. But you can see that the details really hold up here and the shoe took a really nice shine. So to begin the process of cleaning, I applied a healthy lather of Fibing's Saddle Soap, which you can see mixed with water lathers up the shoe upper quite well. You can use the Saddle Soap on the edge dressing as well as the bottom of the shoe if you wish, but keep in mind that this particular soap both cleans as well as conditions the shoe, so be aware of any possibilities such as darkening. Here you see the Fibing Saddle Soap container next to a conditioned and cleaned shoe on one side and to the left a currently uncleaned or unconditioned shoe. The darkening is really due to just the moisture so don't be afraid this will change over time as you will see through the rest of the video. Here you can see me cleaning the shoe, both the uppers as well as the edge dressing with both edges of the brush. The larger surface area brush is good for cleaning the upper, while the smaller brush on the other side is helpful for cleaning the welt. As you can see, the shoes now are of equivalent color and have begun the process of starting to dry. In order to properly condition the shoe, after the shoe has completed its drying process, I use pure polish products including their cleaner and conditioner, which you see right here, their cream polish, their wax polish, and their high shine polish. Those products used in conjunction with Saphir Mirror Gloss has been my way of getting a good shine. Next, I use a heat gun with medium heat and medium force. I check the flow of the air to make sure it's not too forceful or not too hot. But using a heat gun allows me to really expedite the drying process and to make sure that the leather molds nicely to the shoe tree here or any stuffing that I put in to allow the shoe to mold properly. In the next segment, I'm speeding up the process to take you through how the shoe dries over time. You can see using the heat gun expedites the drying process and the shoes, when drying, become lighter colored. Now it's time to apply pure polish products, starting with their cleaner and conditioner. As you can see, the shoe still has some discoloration and variations in leather pattern from the 
initial process of cleaning with the Fibings saddle soap. In order to begin the process of properly conditioning, I experiment with the edge weld using the cleaner and conditioner to rehydrate and darken the edge weld as you're seeing here. As I take you through the process of reconditioning, I also apply some brushing. The brushing allows the leather to heat up and redistribute some of the oils, as well as the moisture, along with the conditioner to provide more even color, which you can see has been achieved here. I brush what some might consider excessively, but I find that the more brushing you do, the more evenly the oils and conditioning products are distributed across the top of the leather, yielding a better result. Here you can see I use a horsehair brush and I'm showing you the pure polish cleaner and conditioner, but I'll also use a pig bristle brush to achieve proper distribution of the conditioner across the surface of the shoe. As we peer more closely at how the shoe is reconditioning, I wanted to show you the various products used to this point, which include our horsehair and pig bristle brush, and our pure polish cleaner and conditioner. You can see that as the conditioner is applied and next the cream is applied, I do a fair bit of brushing and the amount of product actually applied to the shoe is pretty minimal. You can see barely a dab applied, enough to make the tip of the finger feel a little waxy. But that's enough to pretty much cover the front of the shoe. As we move forward, we continue the conditioning project with Pure Polish Products Cream Conditioner, as well as both our pig bristle and horsehair brushes. You can see through this time lapse that I do a fair bit of brushing and with further brushing, further evenness to the color of the shoe, as well as the luster and shine that you begin to see emerge from that process. You can also see that the edge dressing and the outsole stitching has become a lot more prominent than when we first featured the shoe because of the removal of the prior waxes applied. We continue to brush and continue to distribute any areas of irregular tackiness or stickiness. I continue to alternate wax and high shine polishes, including a product by Saphir, their mirror gloss, to then achieve a higher level of shine to the toe, as well as the back of the heel, which are areas I like to emphasize for additional shine in wearing my particular style of shoes. We continue the process of alternating wax polish and high shine polish with intermittent brushing as well as polishing with a rag and damp cloth. We also use a Q-tip and a toothpick to remove any wax that might be building up in the broguing of the shoe. You can see that we're obtaining a nice shine to the tip here and that the colors of the golden harvest are starting to really emerge and become lively. Next, I use Fibing's edge dressing. This is a brown edge dressing. As I got through the conditioning process, I felt like the additional edge dressing with the Fibing's dark brown, as well as an acrylic matte finisher from Angelos was necessary to bring back the pop and flare to the edge dressing of this beautiful shoe. You can see the luster, shine, and highlights, as well as the color, have been reinvigorated on this pair of Floorsheim Golden Harvest that were first made in 1975. That makes these shoes older than me, 
And yet you see this incredible detail, clarity, and just resilience that the shoe exhibits that makes these shoes particularly special and that they hold such a cult status in the shoe enthusiast community. I hope you can see why. And this Florsheim Golden Harvest color is truly unique. And so there you have it, the Florsheim Golden Harvest, this model from 1975, brought back to life with a little bit of conditioning from Pure Polish products, their neutral paste, their neutral wax polish, as well as their high shine products with a slight assist from Saphir. Thanks for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Have a good one.